All right, day two for pre-calc of lesson 2.7. What we're going to do today is actually start to maximize and mi or minimize the functions that you guys have been creating. So our first example that we're going to do with this maximizing is a hockey team plays in an arena with a seating capacity of 15,000 spectators. That might be important for maximizing profits, right? With a ticket price set at $14, the average attendance in recent games has been 9500 Okay. The market survey indicates that for each dollar the ticket price is lowered, the average attendance will increase by 1,000 people. Okay, that sounds awesome, right? More people showing up. Should mean good things, right? Now, what I want you to do is I want you to find a function that models the revenue, the total money coming in, in terms of the ticket price. Then, what ticket price is too high, so high that no one attends? And therefore, you have no money. And C is find the price that maximizes the revenue. Guys, this is something they actually sit down and do in real life. I know this because Every year they talk about, hey, what should the tuition be here? And they actually have it pinpointed to the fact that if they raise it up $100, $50, they'll know they're going to lose two to three kids or something on those lines, right? So the more money the tuition costs, the less students you'll be coming here. You get a little bit more from everyone, but then you start losing money from the students that don't show up. So where is that fine line of raising prices like ticket prices here, to make money, but yet know that not everybody's going to show up now. Less people are going to show up if it costs more. Now, if you lower it, people, more people will show up. Okay? So, there's a couple of two-fold type problem here. The fact that we got people going up or down, and we have a price of a ticket that goes up or down. The question is, can we link both of those together with the same variable? So I like to think of this twofold. We have attendance. Can I call attendance A? And attendance is based off of what? The ticket price. How so? It's, kind of, it's, it's almost an inverse, but unfortunately it doesn't just go up or down based off of 9500 or something, right? So it's inversely related to the price. But if I wanted to just set up the idea that if I lower the price, more people show up. If I higher the price, less people show up. How can I write that equation? First of all, how many people will normally show up? 9,500. It says that if I lower the ticket price by, uh, doesn't say, does it? For a dollar, right? Okay, so for by a dollar. So how can I fix this to say that if I lowered it one dollar, how many people would show up? No. 10500 If I lowered it $2, $11.50, $3, $12.50, so on. Or what happens if I raise the price by a buck? It'd be eight fifty. So what kind of equation can help me identify that $1,000? There's a thousand something going on here. There's a link between these two and the attendance. Kind of depends on what I'm going to let the variable be. Attendance is linked to what? The price. Or the price, not just the price, but the price increase or decrease, right? The price increase or decrease. So maybe call that x? Sure. I don't know. So this function is going to be a of x. And 
can we say that it's going to increase for every dollar it decreases? Mm -hmm. So it means x has to equal the amount off, right? X is going to be let, be let it be the price off of a ticket. So that means actually when x is positive, the amount of money on a ticket goes down. down. <coughs> Interesting. Okay, so we have attendance issues. We also have a ticket price, right? Yeah. So the ticket price. Tickets. Tickets also in the same variable. How can I write that as a ticket price if, uh, if x is 1? How much is a ticket? It's $1 off. What's a ticket? 13. $2 off? It's not a dollar off. What if I raise it a buck? It's 15. How can I write that as a ticket price? Is it 14 plus x? I think it's going to be minus x. Because whatever, if, remember, if x is a positive number, we're actually going down in price. So we're actually, in our particular problem, we're thinking about x as being a positive thing. There's money coming off. What's the link between these two? Do I have to solve for one and throw it in the other? Or there's some other link between the number of tickets sold and how much money you make? Or a link between tickets sold, people there, and money you make. What's the link? The revenue, right? The revenue is the money you make. What is R of X? Revenue. How do I find revenue? 95, okay, let's just say the prices never changed. How much money do I make? Yeah, 9,500 times 14. The amount of tickets sold times how much they cost. So how many tickets are we selling? 9,500 plus 1,000 X, because we don't know the price off, right? So, yeah, times 1,400, or 14 minus X. So, that is the amount of tickets times price of those tickets will tell me how much money we just made. We've now pretty much built a model. Yes? Oh, sorry. That uh, should be a plus. You're right. right. That is a good catch. Otherwise, we would have had some problems. That is a function, but most of us wouldn't recognize that as something we maximize or minimize. Can everybody see that it is a quadratic, though? Yeah. Okay. So uh, if I wanted to get a, a quadratic in standard form, I would do what? Foil it. Foil it. What's 14 times 9,500? One hundred. Thirty-three thousand. Um, minus ninety-five hundred x plus fourteen thousand x minus x squared. There's a quadratic. We just have to simplify it. Can I reorder it to put it in standard form? Because I think that would make us a lot happier. Okay. So it'll be negative 1,000x squared plus 4,500x plus 133,000. Yay. We got A done. Everybody would recognize that. Ooh, this is a parabola that opens. 
So, okay. So, yes, we made a slight mistake here. As in, we have a right equation, but we have a, for part A, we have a function that models the revenue in terms of the, not ticket price, but price off. Okay? So, I'm going to change that. If we change that, our equation's fine. So, yes, we should have said the ticket price was X, and then we lead to a slightly similar equation. We may have actually done this thing, or maybe a little bit more uh, difficult, but maybe not. Either way, you've got to put a couple different things together. Okay, so say we got price off as the, is, is part of that in terms of, so part B, what ticket price would be so high that no one wants to attend? Which means there is no revenue. Which means you need to take that and set it equal to zero. Now, last hour we did this. And we spent a considerable amount of time factoring it. Because it does work. I'll save you guys this. Now, if I was going to use quadratic formula, which you can use, you can use completing the square. That'll work, all right? What's that, this step, what would I do to make our numbers better for factoring quadratic formula or even completing the square? Divide, Divide by at least 100, right? So that means, essentially, I can go back and take two zeros away from everything. Because I'm dividing both sides by 100. Then you end up with this. Then you would also hopefully realize that every single one of them is divisible by a 5, but the leading terms are negative. So I'd make it at least divide it by negative 5. These are all things that I did with the last class. So 0 equals 2x squared minus 9x minus, I think it's 266. And at this point, yeah. at this point, we decided to try to factor it by multiplying 2 times 266, or negative 266, and find the factor pairs that gave me a negative 9, and factor by grouping. Because it does work. I knew it worked because of this, guys. We multiplied factors together to get the problem. That's why I knew. I spent a lot of considerable time doing that and going, hey, guys, the answer was right here. So the answer are those two. Now, granted, we divided by 100 already and a 5, so a negative 5. So it would look slightly different for the answer for this one to that one, but guess what? X is going to equal 14, and X is going to equal what? Solve this out here. A negative 9.5. So your answers, guys, um, X equals 14, and X equals a negative 9.5. Now why is 14 a solution to this problem? What happens in our problem when X equals 14? What does X stand for? Price the price off. If I take $14 off of a $14 ticket, how much is there? Nothing. Nothing. So if there's no, tick, no price for the ticket, then you guys don't have to get money. So when looking at our two numbers of 14 and negative 9.5, 14 makes sense because if the ticket price goes to uh, off of $14, there's zero dollars coming in, which means there's zero revenue. Now, the other number of negative 9.5 means this is actually not a price drop. It's the opposite of a price drop, which means it increases by $9.5. And so you would have 14 minus a negative 9.5, which is $23.5. So at that price... Too many people would say, I'm not going to, or everybody would say, I'm not going to buy tickets at $23.50. So that would be the 
per ticket price, that'd be way too high for anybody who wants to do it. And then in part C, it says find the price that maximizes revenue. To maximize revenue, I'm going to go back to my revenue equation, which is here, and use the opposite of B over 2A. So I'm going to go to a different page for that. Okay, so I'll use X equals opposite of B over 2A, which is a negative of 4,500 over 2 times negative 1,000. And when I do that, I'm with the, the negative 4,500 over negative 2,000. Zeros can cancel out. Negatives cancel out. X equals a 2.25, which means that if I take, I can maximize my profits if I just lower the price of the ticket by $2.25. And if that's the case, that would be 14 minus 2.25, which is... 11.75. So if I charge 11.75 a ticket, I will maximize my profits or the revenue. Sorry, not profits, but revenue. Um, again, we did something slightly different than the book. Yes, we realized it kind of late that I solved this equation here in terms of price off when it should have been the actual ticket price. So if you follow what the book did for their example, um, you will see the slightly different equation, but at the end, you will still come out to the idea that it's $11.75. So your homework for tonight is to get that worksheet and try as many as you can. But for tomorrow, we're going to do another uh, maximizing, minimizing problem that hopefully kind of puts a little bit of a cap on here. And then we'll have the worksheet for the finish up for our homework. Have a great day.